Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Systems Technology Module Number 34. A quick recap of what we were doing in the last uh, module. We were talking about the various uh, issues related to uh, the nomenclatures of directions, particularly in the NCCNC system. And uh, in context of that, we referred to all the motions along the x, y, and z axis. First, formulated the axis. Remember, if the axis uh, was a part of the uh, spindle, which would automatically apply cutting power in case if it is a tool uh, turning system, uh, it would be the tool uh, which would uh, carry the axis uh, z. And if it is a workpiece turning system, as in a turning center or a lathe machine, uh, it would be the workpiece axis, which would be the z axis. In that respect, what we tried to define out is that if the tool moves away from the workpiece, that is really the direction of positive z and axis. And if it is moving towards the workpiece, uh, it is uh, you know considered to be the negative uh, z axis. We also uh, laid out the foundations of how you do the x and the y directions accordingly, uh, based on the z motion of the tool going towards the workpiece or away from the workpiece. And then finally, evaluated it in case of uh, systems which would have a tool spindle or a workpiece spindle. Okay. So, we also talked about rotation uh, nomenclature and typically use the right hand grip rule to see if the direction is clockwise or anticlockwise as opposed to positive and negative. And with the grip rule, you can ascertain uh, if the finger points to the positive direction, the direction of curling of the uh, other fingers, you know, if, if the thumb points to the, to the primary direction in the positive axis, towards the positive axis, then the, the other curling fingers of the right hand would then give you an essence of what is the direction of rotation. So, that would be the positive uh, rotation direction along that particular axis. Okay. We also uh, referred to basics of NC programming where uh, principally you as a programmer write the tool and assume that the tool moves uh, parallel to the contour or the topology which you are machining. Obviously, there is a question of whether the tool is a circular tool or a single point cutting tool. If it is a single point cutting tool like uh, let us say the, uh, the turning tool in a uh, turning center, uh, there uh, the tool tip can be assumed to be the path of the uh, tool or the motion of the tool. Uh, and uh, in case there is a circular cutter like in case of multiple uh, point cutting tools of milling etcetera, you can consider uh, that there is a path of the center of that particular tool which is always compensated by a radius r which is parallel to the contour of the topology that you are wanting to machine. And so, all the programming has to be done by the uh, f with, with the tool as a reference okay, and not as the workpiece. Supposing it happens if the controller decides that for a certain situation it is more, uh, it, is, it is optimum to probably move the workpiece, it will do so on its own. Okay. So, that is what the whole idea is behind this, uh, this process. Okay. And uh, obviously, uh, you also uh, assume sometimes that cutter is compensated in the program and then sometimes you assume that the uh, cutter compensation has to be yourself given. So, the programmer should know numerically about these values. Okay. We also talked about different positioning systems and in context of that we discussed about the um, absolute positioning vis-a-vis -vis the incremental positioning system, absolute being with reference to the uh, reference origin or 0 and um, it would be in terms of mapping the points which are in question again and again with respect to the origin. So, this was intensive on the part of the operator or the programmer who would have to map uh, the dimensions of motion based on looking at uh, the reference point or the origin always. The other was incremental where you go from one point to the other point and move just in about uh, you know a certain amount of distance in a certain direction and it would be a lot of uh, exhaustive calculations back end calculations on the part of the controller which would then define what is going on with reference to the uh, global coordinates or global origin. Okay. So, we also talked about modal not modal commands where modal commands are one which uh, sort of remains when uh, fed for example, feeding speed uh, or let us say rate of rotation unless and until you change that counter uh, the command prevails. And you'll have to specifically change the counter to uh, execute the command in a different manner. And for non model, it's the other way around that once the command has been executed, it automatically washes off and the command counter is empty. 
unless you reprogram it back. For example, if you're talking about dwell time, the dwell time is only supposed to be over one period. Beyond that, the dwell time should be reset to zero automatically, unless the operator wants to get involved and decides that there is dwell time in some other region of the machining of the particular workpiece. Okay. So these are what has been covered so far in the NC programming system. Let's look forward a little bit to develop a good syntax or a good uh, language, you know, um, which would be then uh, quite repetitive and very logical, uh, so that the controller can understand. Uh, the communication between the external manual operator and the and govern that in terms of operations to the machine. Okay, so obviously the structure uh, of an NC part program is made in a manner uh, so that the whole structure is made up of a series of commands, and these commands are input into the MCU in a serial manner. So, there should be a way of reading serial 1, 2, 3, 4 in that manner, so that the uh, reading of the controller can be as per the reading of the index number. So, there has to be a indexing number somehow okay, for the different commands. Obviously, uh, the MCU then should interpret these commands and generate the necessary signals to each of the drive units, be it stepper motor or DC motor as I had discussed in the last few modules and that should be able to accomplish the required action in terms of machining. Uh, and then the uh, NC program should have a particular structure, a specific syntax uh, which is understandable and it is a global uh, syntax which can be then repeated by all, so that any new programmer can interact with the controller and be able to uh, generate these necessary signals uh, in terms of his commands to the controller. Okay, so that machining can be carried out over all uh, work centers. And uh, just as you have language, uh, you can design the syntax in a uh, appropriate manner, in, in, a, in a commensurate manner. Uh, in a language, for example, you have some words uh, which you know get into sentences. Okay? And uh, the individual words may not make much sense, but if they are put in a certain grouping, uh, that actually starts making sense and you can understand that language. In a similar manner, commands are uh, basically made in units called blocks or statements and each block or a statement that is a sentence is made up of one or more machine commands which act as words. Okay? So, you have small commands of the machines and they are all absurd and they are you know if, if you place them uh, just without any sequence it does make it does not make any sense. But if you develop a sequence of these words together, that makes a statement or a sentence in a, in a language. So, in the same manner, the command should be sequenced in a particular manner, so that it starts making sense to the controller and it can start understanding. Okay? So, two aspects here to be remembered. One is the independent command unit and then several such units in a certain sequence, building what you call a block or a statement. And then there are several blocks, just as there are several sentences in a paragraph, there are several blocks that can go and make the whole program of the NC for doing the particular part machining that is in question. So, there are several uh, commands in general which are grouped together to accomplish uh, specific uh, machining operation and hence the use of a block of information for each of these operations is needed. And uh, each command gives a specific element of control data such as dimension or feed rate as I will just show you. And uh, command can also be recorded as a word, just as you know the language syntax. And words are arranged within the block uh, uh, in a certain manner. And this, there is a format for this arrangement which is there, which is also incidentally known as a block format. Okay. So if you really look at the various formats which have evolved over time, the earlier uh, uh, generation machines used to just have sort of a numerical uh, driven control without using of any English alphabets or any English words. The, the one of the reasons why the name numerical control came into picture. And this uh, is also uh, subsequently it was called as the fixed sequential format. I will try to explain this how this happens first. Obviously, as you will see in this fixed sequential format uh, of the arrangement of the various words that we are talking uh, in a block. Uh, there are certain repetitions which are very, very unnecessary and time consuming. So, therefore, the 
next available format, utilize the tab button. You always have a tab button in a computer you all must have seen. So that you could repeat some of the values from the last line without really specifically having to enter it. So you have one tab and then another tab without a value. So obviously the row and column address above that particular uh, sentence would be repeated just because of these two tabs. So, you do not have to exclusively mention the value every time. So, it saves some programming time. So, that kind of a format evolved. Okay. So, that is called a tab sequential format. And then finally, the latest one obviously has not only uh, you know all numbers, but also a little bit of addition of words which uh, changes the domain because then you can actually specify or you can identify the particular uh, unit command in a particular block in a very easy manner. Okay. So, I will show all these things by practical examples so that you can get a good feel of how these processes have been accomplished. So, uh, let us look at the fixed sequential format and uh, if you just look back here to this zone of the slide, it talks about a program. Okay. It is a three line program. So, obviously, you can see these different you know uh, numer numeral numerical values at these different locations, which probably means something. So, there are about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 such numerical values and uh, each of them must be having some meaning and then there are such sentences or such blocks. So, this whole uh, area here right over here, you know of the first line of entities, numerical entities is referred to as a block. Okay. So, in fact, you have this as block 1 and similarly, you have the other two entities here probably this particular line and then there is another line at the bottom right about here as the two different blocks block let us say this is block 1 I am sorry, this is block 1, this is block 2 and this is block 3. Okay. So, there are three blocks which are there. Further, uh, each block would have now these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 commands. Okay. So, each of these 7 commands probably means something. They are also sequenced in some way, so that you can have a certain understanding. Okay. And this is the way that the fixed sequential format was first constructed. We will look into each aspect of this fixed sequential con uh, format to sort of uh, gauge what would be the, uh, what is the most current standard in the programming. And uh, this is what was the evolution uh, point from which NC programming started to take place? That's the that's that's the name. That's why the name numerical control came into picture. Okay, so in the interest of time, I think we will uh, close this module uh, now. But in the next module, I'm going to delve into the details of what is the meaning of each unit command in such a sentence, and then uh, give you a basic of how these commands are in a certain sequence to mean certain. Uh, instruction to the controller to be given then to the machining unit. Thank you.